And we are live! Hello! Welcome. Hi, hey guys! Welcome, welcome! I'm, I'm Emma, this is Robbie, this is Pat, and I'm just here to be the pretty face, but these two guys, they're going to tell you all about our baby seahorses. So I'm going to flip this around. I have to look at my face. Pat, tell us about hey yourself. Guys. Um, I'm Pat, I'm a keeper here at Sea Life Sydney Aquarium and uh, don't worry about those dugongs because uh, we've got something real <laughs> fancy, something real interesting to tell you about seahorses. What do you reckon Robbie? Uh, Pat, I think you could not be more correct in the fact that these seahorses are definitely the star of not just the show but the aquarium. Pig can, <laughs> <laughs> Pig can leave it for today. Um, but we've got Good morning our... Lisa. Hi Lisa, how are you? Beck saying hello. <laughs> Hi Beck. Um, <laughs> Yeah, what we have are our uh, collection of really, really unique white seahorses, also known as the Sydney Seahorse, uh, and they are here on show uh, doing their finest. So if you guys have a look inside the tank. All right, let's go. Doop, 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 into the tank of seahorses. Can you zoom in? That's, that's what we've got, that's clear. <laughs> well, what you guys are looking at right now is uh, every single size seahorse that we have at the moment. So these guys are white seahorses. They're uh, endangered and they're part of a really important breeding program to hopefully go back out into the wild and repopulate their species. Uh, so inside at the aquarium over the last few months, we've been breeding uh, as many of them as we can. And inside this one frame that Emma is so perfectly showing right now, David Attenborough's got nothing. All I'm saying is the BBC, watch out. Take note, guys. Me um, and his iPhone, we're doing this. But you guys have they've got uh, adult seahorses, which are the big ones. We've got our four and five month old seahorses, which are the smaller ones. And what you probably can't see are itty bitty, teeny, teeny, tiny little ones that are down in the right, uh, lower right hand corner of the screen. <clears throat> Those represent uh, ones that are just a few days old now. So very, very cool seahorses. So we can't see them they're so small. So Robbie, show us how itty bitty, teeny tiny. Look like, like that. All right. Pat's prepared oh, earlier, that what? might work. In true Blue Peter star, here's one we prepared <laughs> earlier. Hi. So these sort of mid-sized ones are the ones we've been breeding for about four months now. And then there's a couple of super duper tiny ones um, that are the juveniles that are about three days old. So these ones are about like the Pat size ones and the adult ones are like the, the Robbie size ones. So. so if you understand the reason why Pat's saying that is because he's a pretty short man. Robbie's a tree and I'm a short tree. Let's just compare those two. So if you can imagine seahorses, Pat is a baby seahorse and Robbie is a bigger one. So what we're going to do guys, we're going to start answering your questions. So uh, Poppy, uh, three years old from Queensland. Hi Poppy! Hello, We'd Poppy. like to know if the seahorses blow bubbles. Do the oh, seahorses... These seahorses? I wish they blew bubbles. Bubbles are one of my favorite things to blow, but these seahorses, uh, not really. Their favorite thing to do instead of blowing lots of bubbles is to suck up lots of food. So if you look really close at their little tiny snouts, just like this uh, bad boy here, um, their snouts are shaped almost or work almost like a vacuum cleaner and that's what they'll use to pick up all the little bits of food. So sort of the opposite of blowing bubbles, Poppy. I go, Poppy, hope you answer that question. Uh, someone else asked, uh, oh, Savannah, age four, where do seahorses live? <laughs> uh, seahorses live uh, in the ocean. Um, <laughs> But uh, they live in a really large variety across a bunch of different oceans. So there are quite a few different species of seahorses. Most of them live in the tropics, but we've got some here in Sydney. There's other ones that live in the UK, so sort of all over the place. Cool. Uh, what do they eat? That's another, that's a question for you, Sir Ello. <laughs> control those eyes, not so wide, please. What do they eat? So if you can zoom in, Emma, these are all tiny little mice and shrimp that, um, we fed to the seahorses. So they look like dust guys, so the stuff on the camera that kind of looks a little bit like snowflakes and dust, that's the shrimps that uh, Pat's talking about. So these tiny little shrimps will be found around areas um, like the nets that you might see around Manly or Sydney Harbour and these nets grow all bits and pieces of algae and seaweed and then the mice go and live inside the seaweed and the algae and that's why we find all of these seahorses living on the nets and and um, seagrass and seaweed and, and all different areas like that. So Milo, who's six years old, hey Milo, would like to know how long do seahorses live for, Robbie? Oh, that's a very good question, Milo. Because there's so many different kinds of seahorses, there's not really one answer. But these ones here, these white seahorses or Sydney seahorses, live around five or seven years. They're getting pretty on 
than uh, the adults that we have here are all grown ups. We're not sure how old they are, but all the little ones still have a lot of life left in them. That's a very good question. Kelsey, hey Kelsey, do you guys do anything special to set up? Ah, oh, we do. What do you do special to set up this aquarium? How do you make it? You know, how do you make it livable for seahorses? Oh, that's an like, excellent question. Because we can't just pop them in water. Oh, no, of course not. It's got very, very special water. So one of the most important things that aquariums do when looking after their animals is make sure that their environments or their tanks are uh, as natural as possible. So here inside the seahorse display, we've got lots of net, which is similar to the habitat this particular species likes to live on. We've got some sand, we've got some rocks, we've got some places for them to find some shelter, and we've got tons of places for their food as well. And so we have to be very careful and learn a lot about the animal before we put them inside an aquarium, making sure that where they live in the aquarium is as close to their home as possible. That is such a good question. Um, so we have a question, how big do they get? So do different species get different sizes? Yeah, absolutely. So like uh, how old do they get? Different species are different sizes. We've got these ones here uh, get to be about uh, seven to 10 centimeters, but you've got other ones that get to be about closer to 15 and 20, uh, live in the Pacific Ocean over in the United States. And then you got little tiny ones called a pygmy seahorse, which are bright pink and don't get more than a couple centimeters tall anyway. Oh my um, goodness, pygmy, pygmy seahorses, guys, bright pink. That's the best. Yeah, they're pretty adorable. Why don't we have those? Uh, they're very tiny and they like to live in the tropics and we like to showcase Sydney Harbor. Fair enough, that's absolutely fine. So these guys you'll find all around Sydney? Is that these correct? guys, yeah. These guys live in Sydney all around, um, and not just Sydney, but down uh, down south a bit and up north a bit. Uh, so they live all along the New South Wales coastline with tons of really good environments for them. That's very cool. So uh, Alexa, age three. Hey Alexa, is a seahorse a fish? I'm gonna give this one to Ooh, Pat. Yeah. Is a seahorse a fish, sir? Uh, yes, yeah, so a seahorse is classed as a cygnathid. So same as your sea dragons and pipefish. Um, Seahorses are in that significant group, but yes, they are. And we just had a question. So as you can see, we've got lights on in the tank. Do the lights switch off at night so it mimics day and night? They absolutely do. Uh, day and night cycles are really important for most animals. But these seahorses uh, in particular respond and behave naturally based on uh, how much light and the time of day. And so it's really important that we uh, make the day night and night the daylight and night light cycle as natural as possible so at night the lights shut down so it's just like a full moon uh, and then in the day they get nice and bright like it's a summer day that's cool pat we have a question for you from grayson yeah. uh hey grayson h5 hey, grayson. would like to know what are their names all right pat one two three name the seahorses uh who's that this one pat can be grayson no. This is, this is, this is <laughs> that, that can be Grayson. Okay. Uh, so that one's a boy. This one's a boy? Yep, it's got All the right. big pouch there. Okay. Um, where can a female, which one's a female, Robbie? Can you see mm, them? There's one back there, this little white one in the back. What's I her name? I feel like that one will be Taylor. That's yep. Taylor. All right, so we've got, nice. And who's, who's this one just hanging on the rope here? What's his name? Oh, that looks like a little fresh juvie. Uh, he can be... Prince Reese. Reese. I like Reese. You like Reese for a seahorse? Yep. Reese a seahorse? Yep. Okay. Yep. Very cool. So you mentioned this one's um, a male because it has a pouch. Yeah. Is he yeah. pregnant? Yeah. Oh, so, he is very pregnant. Hang on, hang on. Like, ladies, 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 if you don't already know this, it is the male seahorse who is pregnant and gives birth. Alrighty. One, two, three. How do you feel about that? As a man, would you like to swap roles? Um, probably not swap roles with uh, the seahorses. Uh, probably not. Have I, to I think the male think... seahorses are the heroes of nature. Yeah. Here, if I do yeah, say definitely. so. So why is it the males? Why do they? Why are the ones that have the babies? What What happens here? Uh, so that's actually a really cool, good, unique, and interesting question to ask. So obviously, the big belly on the male seahorse, which you can see right. There. Uh, that is, is all little babies developing. Now what happens is a female will still make the egg and what she'll do is she'll transfer those eggs to the male uh, inside his pouch to where he will fertilize them and then um, grow them until they're born. Now this is really, really smart for a seahorse because it takes a lot of energy to make eggs and so what will happen is while the seahorse is uh, developing and holding and carrying those babies, the female can go away, eat lots of food and make a lot more eggs. And so once the male gives birth to upwards of 100 babies at any given time, uh, he, 
the female will be ready to just give them a whole new set of eggs. So no rest for the wicked, these ones. You just get right back into it. So how many babies can they have at one go? So the gestation period for these guys is around 30 days. So after a month of um, them producing tiny little babies, they will then pop out between 70 to 200 to 300 uh, juvenile tiny, tiny little baby seahorses. Um, depending on the species, um, yeah, it can be 50 to 300 or so babies. These guys, we generally have 50 them. to 300 yeah. babies? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So the clutches that we've had have been around 50 to 200 babies at once. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully we might see a couple hundred babies pop out of this guy in the next few days. That is amazing. So why do we have seahorses here? So what's what's happening? What's the project? Tell us the reason why we're doing. This is a, an amazing project that we're all really happy to be a part of. Uh, so these uh, white seahorses or Sydney seahorses have recently become endangered uh, and they're endangered largely due to habitat loss in the wild. And so what this has allowed us to do is to get together with the Department of Primary Industries. Uh, shout out to Dave H. I know he's watching. Um, Hello, well, Dave H. <laughs> uh, as well as the University of Technology Sydney um, and then a few other partners together to be able to collect these um, adults from the wild and breed them to introduce them back into the wild once we've, once we've sort of re-established their, uh, their, their habitats. And so there's a few parts to this project, but each one of these uh, individuals, each one of these babies are so important because their goal in the next few weeks is to go uh, join their wild counterparts and make more seahorses of their own. That is super cool. Um, I'm just being guys, a few of you are saying that the sound occasionally is cutting out and sounds muffled. I'm so sorry about that. I promise you I'm not covering the mic. Uh, we'll just speak as loud, as clear as possible, but this is live and we are relying on Wi-Fi, so I do apologize if the sound isn't as clear. So that's very cool. So how many baby sea, how many seahorses do we have in total, including babies? Ooh, well, uh, lots. Lots? Uh, dozens, we've got dozens, dozens of dozens, seahorses dozens. here, uh, all getting nice and healthy and strong to go out into the wild. Now, one of the things that's really important about putting an endangered species into the wild and helping their numbers is making sure they've got every chance of success. Uh, and so outside of, aside from breeding them here at the aquarium, we need to make sure we're making their habitats really good for them. So we've uh, been working on what are called seahorse hotels, which are these really sort of unique structures that go uh, in their natural environment. And then over the course of a few years, go from artificial to natural and then helps restore the habitat that was depleted. Uh, Neela, age 10, would like to know, how do they get pregnant? So how do they get pregnant? Uh, Robbie might have covered this a little bit earlier, but what happens is, so the big bellies that the males have, the females will transfer their eggs into the stomachs of the male or the pouch of the male, and then the male will then fertilize these eggs. Uh, after around 30 days of sitting in the stomach of the male, or the pouch, sorry, um, the, the male will then sort of contract and release um, hopefully a couple hundred baby seahorses. That is so, so cool. Ah, oh, Mel asks, where are the mermaids? Good question, Mel. Robbie, why are you not dressed in a mermaid outfit? <laughs> oh, maybe we'll do that next. Maybe we'll so do that next. So the seahorse is time, Mel? It is the seahorse's time. The mermaids, they will come back, I promise you. Are seahorses tropical? Malik would like to know, age 10. Uh, Malik, yes, some seahorses are tropical, these species not so much, but there's also some that like to live in colder waters than here as well. So there are quite a few though that like the tropical reefs and coastlines. And we do have a question, I think we've already covered this, but do they lay eggs or is it live birth? Uh, it's a live birth and so while the female makes eggs and she deposits them into the male's pouch, he then gives birth to them alive. That is very cool. So here is back to our very pregnant male. Robbie, when are you expecting him to give birth? Oh, look, any day now. Any day. That is super, super exciting. Any day. Uh, last question uh, before we go, guys. We've been asked a few times, can you have seahorses as pets? Um, people do have seahorses as pets, uh, but these guys here, and it always depends on the species. Some species are a bit hardier than others, but the way that I usually look at it is, um, they're very high maintenance, they need lots of food, they need lots of care, and you need to be really careful when you look after them. So it's probably best to leave them to an aquarium or to the wild uh, if you're not ready to make that commitment. Are they generally a threatened species in the wild? Uh, generally speaking, uh, this uh, white seahorse is the second species to be classed as endangered. 
Um, they're not necessarily as a species threatened, but there is a lot of fishing and ornamental uh, fishing and souvenir trade. So uh, a lot of times one of the big threats that seahorses sort of globally have, uh, aside from habitat loss, is uh, they, they tend to be overfished and, and taken for souvenirs and keychains. And so sort of the best thing for us to do is to sort of appreciate them here alive at an aquarium or uh, from your living rooms via live stream. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we'll leave it on that one. So a really good message is just leave the seahorse horses alone don't collect them from the wild and put them as pets I see they're hanging on to net seahorses love to hang on to stuff and that's why they've got that net in there to hang on and we'll just end this with our beautiful pregnant male who hopefully will be giving birth any day now thank you so much for joining in Robbie thank you so much for your time thank and you Pat thank you so much Stay for your safe, time guys, guys everyone hope you enjoy our live stream don't forget to visit our virtual aquarium where we'll have more information for you and lots of fun facts and worksheets to do thank you so much guys take care